Episode of the BBL Show. I'm your host Tony Camper, and today we have a uh, today's going to be a, a episode all about the bench press. Um, let me introduce uh, my co-hosts. We'll start with the lovely Casey, chilling on the beach. Say what's up, Casey. All right, and uh, my man Big Will, what's up? You Will. All right, and. Uh, the man behind the scenes, the guru, Larry Carter. Hey, what's up, everybody? All right, and that brings me to our special guest, um, that barbarian, been in the barber life a while. Um, let's give it up for our big bench, Steve Poitras. Say what's up, man. What's up, what's up, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me today. Definitely, definitely. All right, so... Um, Big Bench, that's your nickname. That's Why is nickname. that? I got to keep it up, man. I got to keep it up. <laughs> well, it's hey, Larry. Harder, it's getting a little harder the older I'm getting. I have to do have to say that. But. Nonsense, man. You got you to gotta keep us old guys uh, motivated. Um, Larry, let's show the public uh, what, 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 why uh, they call him Big Bench Steve. Um, once this video starts... You can kind of walk us through it as far as uh, the Ooh. weight, where it was, and all that good stuff. Yeah, man. So that was actually one of the meets that I did at the American Challenge, and that one was uh, three awards. That one was for the open class bench, which was any age, and it was um, in the 181-pound category. I normally weigh in about 175 to 8. So that was uh, first place for the open category. And then it was first place also for the submaster category, which is a little less competitive. It's 35 to 39 year olds. And then it was a uh, best lifter category. And what they do with that is it's just based strictly on a Wilkes formula, what you weigh versus the amount of weight that you're pushing up in order to get like a best lifter award. So those are what those three medals are right there. What uh, what were your lifts for the for the event? Uh, my, my my best pause was a uh, 385, and that was um, the federation I was mentioning earlier, which is 100% raw powerlifting federation. This is at the video he's, you guys are getting ready to show. That's at a local gym here that I go to, O2 Fitness. I don't know if you guys have them around or not. Um, and that's a good buddy of mine that actually competes with me, Josh Dramus. He's a member too, um, and Josh. Josh competes in the uh, he was in the 220 class for a while, but he's he's in the 242 now. He wanted to put on a little bit of muscle. So this was 405. This was a uh, PR I did. It was about two weeks ago. And um, what I what I normally do is when I go in on max days, I'll uh, hit 135 about five or six times. I'll put 225 on, two plates on, and uh, hit that about three or four. Then I'll hit 315 usually once or twice, and then I'll just do like a three rep max. I, that day I started with 365, then I went to 385 and then 405. This was a competition I did in February at the North Carolina State Meet. Um, this was my second attempt, which was my good lift at 385. I started off the meet at 369. This was a uh, pause competition. You've got a front judge, you've got two side judges, and you've got a back judge. And what they're looking for is ass has to be flat, head flat. Um, you can't move your feet at all. It's just strictly pretty much just chest, shoulders, and triceps. Um, that's a guy, actually, that I compete with. He's in the 220 class. He does full power lifting. His name is Nick Hammer. Not sure if he's part of the group or not. But uh, he's a beast, man. He's got like a 700-pound deadlift. That was a 390 pause, and um, that was getting ready for that. February meet that you guys saw me do so pretty much what I do man is I'll do either Monday or Tuesdays I'll work out my chest and I'll hit it hard for about an hour hour and a half what I'll do one week is I'll do five different exercises I'll do flat bench like with all the videos that you just saw and I'll do low reps I'll go in and I'll 
do my three warm ups like I normally do, and then I'll go in and I'll hit up 10, 8, 6 at whatever desire rate it is that day. And then on incline, I'll normally do three sets of 10. Then I'll hit decline, I do about 12, 10, 8. Then there's a pretty cool thing that I do with a buddy of mine. It's called plate presses. It's what we call it. We made it up. And it's where you just lay it on a flat bench, and we stack four 45-pound plates on top of my chest and also his chest. And someone's got to hold the top because, you know, the plates are about that thick. So we just hit that till failure, and he takes another plate off, hits that till failure, another plate off, hits that till failure. Hold on. Hold on. You're, you're, benching, you're benching with the plates on your chest? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's almost like uh, how some people do, like a board. Mhm. Mm mhm. Okay, I got. Yeah, you. but you're actually just like the 45-pound plates that you guys use to lift or just squat or deadlift mm -hmm. or whatever. I'm just laying flat on the bench and I'm just holding the plates and I'm just pressing only the plates up as many times as I can until failure. Oh, so, okay. I got. You. I got yeah. you. So I'm just. They're literally just stacked. It looks like four or five cookies, and then you just you press them until failure. So you just then you deload, you take another one off, you take another one off, another one off, until you're down to one. Then the second set, what we normally do is we start reverse order. We start with one plate, but then we add a second plate, add a third plate, add a fourth plate. Um, that's that exercise, you know, that I that I do is a little bit different. Um, we how'd also you up, how'd you come up with this routine? I've never heard of that before. It was just creative, man. I was just like, you know what? Everybody typically grabs that 60 or 80 pound dumbbell and they lay there. And, you know, they'll do wide flies with it. They'll come up, they'll twist it, they'll squeeze it. They're working that center portion. And it, I'm just thinking, you know, what what else can we do that's to failure that you can lay down, get 40 or 50 reps in, and you're not constantly rocking up, getting breaks, taking sets. And what can you do that is just going to give you like a full chest burnout that you get? 60 to 80 reps in in a matter of two or three minutes while you're still there. So, you know, I incorporate that. I do that. That's kind of strictly my chest day. Um, and then once that's done, um, I usually take a day off in between, and then I'll do biceps and triceps. Uh, I do five exercises of everything I do. So um, for biceps, I'll do strictly hammer curl. I'll do strict curl. I'll do, um, it's what I, you know, where your knees to the elbow and you pick it up and you just squeeze it and hold it. You know, I'll do that. Um, there's a couple of machines there that I do. Triceps are a huge part of your chest. So I do a lot of um, weighted tricep dips. I'll do overhead single arm triceps, overarm double head. Um, I'll do, you know, just regular dips off the side of the bench. Um, there's another one that they call um, like a power tricep where you're laying down and you grab it and you just kind of kick it back and you kick it forward. Um, I another thing, think that was a lot. Yeah. Another thing that's pretty cool to do that you can do is um, where you see the guys doing like the dips and they got their knees on the pad is you put a uh, eight pound medicine ball on the pad and you strictly just push down. You know, it's almost like a CPR thing. You just push down in order to get, you know, the tricep extension and lock right there. So that's kind of what I do, biceps and triceps. Um, take a day off in between that, and then I'll do back and shoulders. So when I do my three sets of 10 for five different exercises, I'm essentially doing 150 reps of each body part, you know, once a week. Um, chest, I'll probably end up doing about 150 to two. Then the following week, the exercises are the same except chest. I'll do high reps. I'll go in, I'll burn out 135, I'll burn out 225, 275, 315, um, and then I'll finish that uh, workout. So that's kind of routine two of chest. The third week, I go in there and I incorporate, I don't know if y'all seen the, the videos or not, if the guys were in the slingshots. Do you guys know where those are? Yeah, I want to I wanna actually talk about those a little bit, but go ahead. Okay. So I've got, I've got a uh, thing, I, you know, I, I Google a lot of what I do, whether it's stuff for my kids and running or whether it's exercise routines or whatnot, and we all do that, right? So there's a guy by the name of Mark Bell that introduced this thing called a slingshot, and I was actually having a lot of problems with my shoulder joints, and I had to get some ace, shots in my AC joint due to all the pausing needs. 
So what the slingshot does is it helps you a lot on the bottom half. That's a good picture of that. That's it right there. It gives you about an extra 30 or 40 pounds on your max, on your one rep max. Um, Will, I've seen you play with uh, like 315. So if you're doing that now like six times, if you got a slingshot, you probably get about nine to 11 reps somewhere in there with that. What that does is it just, it's like a rubber band to the bottom of your chest. And when you guys bring it down, it just shoots straight up. Now, when you come down with it, as soon as you unwrap it, the weight is still the same. So that's getting, you know, you still have a negative with that 315, 350, 225, whatever you're playing with. But the bottom half is less pressure on your shoulders, your tendons, your joints, and it just helps you push through it. Your tricep lockout is still the same. Your negative is still the same. Um, but what that helps with is really overload. And so, you know, with the, the overload is good for when I do my, when I do my meets, you know, it, it helps because that slingshot, I may be playing with 440, 450. So when I'm still coming down real slow, it's working that tricep area good, your upper back, your traps, your lats. And what that does is it builds that up. So when I'm in my meets that are in pauses, I'm used to, you know, pulling down 450 before it hits the chest. And when you do it at 385, it really helps your mental game a lot because it's like, man, you know, this really – you know, even though you're pausing it at the bottom, you know, when you get, when you have that, when you're coming down with it, you're like, man, it's going to be a piece of cake when I come up. It's, you know, it's 60, 70 pounds lighter. Um, I also incorporate a uh, thing called the bench block. And so uh, you see a lot of guys in gyms, you know, the, the bench block's fairly new. A lot of guys in gyms will have like three two by sixes, two by eights, and they just stack it up. You know, they'll come down, they'll hit it. They tap, you know, and there's different ways that you can incorporate that. You can hit it with a touch and go real quick, which really helps your tricep lock out. Really only your tricep lock out with that. But that's a great picture of that right there. Um, you can also pause it on that. Um, and what that's good for is the bottom half of your chest because you're hitting the weight, you know, at probably like a 60% volume instead of 100%. So the slingshot is really good for the bottom half. Everything I mentioned in between with the high reps, the low reps is all good for the whole center portion of the chest. You know, incline I think is key. A lot of upper back exercises are key. I do a lot of dumbbell rows, a lot of shoulder shrugs. I'll do front laterals, I do side laterals, I do um, military press. Anything I can think of to incorporate uh, my upper body that would help towards that. A lot of people right. say I need to work on my leg drive. I don't really incorporate my legs when I do it. My wife's a personal trainer, and she's, you know, she's always said, you know, I'd rather win it the way that you did than to have someone, you know, arch their back and this and I ha actually had back surgery about two years ago, and uh, before that, man, I was I couldn't even put a sock on. I've got a ten-year-old little boy, and he was getting me dressed in the mornings, and I just had a had enough painkillers. I had five epidurals. And they told me that bench press actually wasn't bad for your back, and then I needed to stop doing squats and deadlifts. And I got a father like we all do that loves me, and he just said, "Well, he's kind of in disagreement with the doctor." But that was two years ago. At that point in time, I weighed about 170, and my max was around pause max was 325. And now I've put on about 10 pounds. Like I'm holding right around 180 in my Pause max is about 385 to 395. And I've got just as much free range of motion in my back as my 10 year old son does. I mean, it just, you just gotta be smart with what you do at all times. So, so before your surgery, were you, were you benching back then? I was benching back then, but I was having some difficulty with it. Like I said, you know, my max was around like 325 and I was still in the 181 class. So the 181 class is the weights of 166 body weight to 181. And so I was about 168, 170. I was still in the same class I'm at now, but I was on the lower scale of that. So I said, you know, I like how my abs look. I like the rip look. Let me see how strong I can be in the same weight class, but let me put on 10 pounds of muscle. You know, it's not all muscle. A little bit's fat, a little bit's muscle. But so me at the lightest of the 181 class, I was doing like 325, 330. Um, 
But then when I put on that extra 10 pounds and I continued in the same class, but I was on the top part of that weight class because it's a, it's a 16 pound difference. You know, 166 to 181.8 is what it is. And it's, uh, you know, it's like a one, the next class up is the 198 and that goes from 182 to 198. Um, after that, it's a 220 class. It goes from 199 to 220. So you always want to try and be the heavier in the weight classes. Because that way it's to your advantage. You've got, you know, generally more muscle tone, more muscle mass than the guy that, you know, weighs the least amount. So yeah. I'm starting to learn now about um, water manipulation and things that you can do. I actually competed with a guy at the state meet who was 195 on a Monday. And um, on the Friday weigh-in, he ended up weighing in about 182 in five days. And I mean, this guy was just, he was sick, man. His name was Kevin Woods. He's actually a member on y'all's thing. So he paused the same thing that I did. Um, he ended up cutting another pound. He weighed in at the 181 class. We tied strength wise, but I got him because I weighed 177. So, I, you know, you Wilk score, I weighed less than he did. But his squat right now is about a 580, and his deadlift, I think, was a 720 in the 181 class. What's his name? Kevin Woods. What's up, Kevin? Yeah. Um, so Look, talk about the, the, the water uh, manipulation. What what have you learned, or what what do you know? Because I'm actually trying to trying to incorporate that in my next meet because right, of the right. So yeah, my what, what what I've learned from that is is uh, you pretty much on it the week of the meet on Monday what you what they require you to do is to take in as much water as you can. They like for you to do two to three gallons. So what I try and do is I'll drink like a gallon and a half by lunch and then a gallon and a half before bedtime. And what that does is it just eliminates all the salt, the sodium, the water weight. Um, and you can essentially lose, you know, five to 10 pounds like Kevin did in a matter of four or five days. And eventually it comes back. This um, is by drinking that much water? You're pissing all day long, man. All yeah. Day. Yeah. What you what you end up doing is um, it doesn't make sense at first, but what you end up doing is by drinking all of that water, uh, you get to a point where you trick your body, and your body goes, "Well, I don't need the water anymore," so it causes you to just pee it all out, and then you end up dropping weight. Um, we had did this with like we talked to Carla because she had to meet uh, weight, and this was like one of the things that she did: drink tons and tons of water. But it, you have to do it over a five-day period. You can't do it like overnight. Um, you, you, there's some, you know, there's some other things that can make you pee out water, but this is just more of a natural way of doing it. Yeah, you know, they 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 say it's you know it's, it's a safe way to do it. You know, I'm I'm reading it right now. You know, and depends on how much you can drink and stuff like that. You know, they want you to carb load. You know, the night before. So what it is is, uh, sorry about that. So what it is is um, you overextend the water Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like Larry was saying. You drink three gallons, three gallons. Wednesday, you go to two gallons. Thursday, you go to a gallon. And then Friday, you pretty much only drink when you're thirsty. Mm -hmm. And so what that does is it eliminates the salt, the sodium, the water weight. And, you know, you're dehydrated by then. Um, and then once you hit your weigh-in, though, you'll weigh in really light compared to the rest of the guys. Then they want you to carb load. And they actually say a lot of guys like in the MMA, a lot of fighters, like I know St. Pierre, some of those guys, they do that also to make weight. And um, they don't want you to have, you can only have 57 carbs a day. That's what I'm reading right now. Monday, they drink two and a half to three gallons of water. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday are the same. Thursday, well, this one on Thursday from what I'm reading says you bump it actually up to four gallons of water. And then Friday, if you want to, you could do like a diuretic. You, know, you take a water pill. A lot of people say vitamin C. A lot of people say that you can take um, uh, dandelion root or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's supposed to help you do it. Um, but, you know, and then they say that one after, once after weigh-in, that what you need to do is you need to drink a whole bunch of Pedialyte, and that'll give you a lot of your electrolytes back. Um, and so that's kind of, 
That's you haven't tried word. this yet, right? What's that? You haven't tried this yet, right? You know, I've played with it like a little last week uh, because I've got my weigh-ins this coming Saturday. And in a matter of two days, I, you know, I, and I know most powerlifting guys aren't really big into cardio. And, you know, my wife, she owns a studio gym, and it's very successful, and I, I like working out there. But I also, you know, like doing the elliptical. It's a stationary thing, and I'll put on sometimes, like I got now, two or three shirts and sweat out water that way. But these guys don't even do cardio when they're doing it. I mean, so so what I normally do is I drink a little less of the water, but I add cardio to it. So instead of drinking like three gallons, I'll drink two. But I'll hit the elliptical up and I'll do it for, you know, five miles. Um, another thing that some of the guys are doing are sauna suits. And, you know, mm -hmm. they're getting in the steam room and the saunas. And, you know, they're putting on the hoodies and they're just sweating it all out. And, mm -hmm. You know, I just – I don't know – how much strength you lose with the amount? Like I don't know how much that really hurt Kevin when he lost 15 pounds. I mean, he was. A, I, I don't. I, I'm friends of him. I've got acquaintance of him, but I don't know what he was doing when he was weighing 195 or when he weighed in at 180. I know what I was doing, but I know last week me just doing the water manipulation for two days with just two hours of cardio, I lost six pounds in two days. So I think with the water weight manipulation too, you don't lose as much strength because you're basically drying yourself out. I mean, the, the biggest issue, like a lot of MMA fighters do it, and if you look at Silva, that was one of the reasons why they said his, his bones cracked when he went to kick the guy, mm -hmm. because he, he was just hollowed out. He, didn't, he was meeting the weight, but he didn't have enough water back in him when it was time to fight. So yeah. you, you don't necessarily lose strength, um, from what I understand. Is yeah. You do become more brittle with your bones because you don't have all of, all of that water in there. It's just dropping water weight. You know, I'm on a website now. It's, uh, if you Google water manipulation, and it's, it's the first one that pops up, and it's uh, T Nation is the website. And it actually gives you, you guys, it, it gives you training guidelines of what you should do and not do. Like sets of 10 to 12 reps, you take – six to eight sets per muscle group, a 30-second rest in between sets. Um, it gives you stuff for, for quads, hamstrings, back exercises, chest exercises. And, um, you know, they've got reasons why, you know, Wednesdays, upper body only, Thursdays, high-intensity training. Um, but, you know, it's a certain amount of glycogen that you're, you're looking to not have and looking to recover and um, – like I said, the carbohydrates, the salt, the sodium, it's it's a scientific thing to it. It's not just like you just chug a whole bunch of water. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. um, it's something that's new to me, but a bunch of guys do it, and it just seems like it's kind of in their template of things that they do to, you know, compete in the lower classes to get a higher number due to competition. So. Yeah, guys do that in, in – boxing and MMA too, you know, like you want to be, okay, for instance, you got guys who fight in boxing uh, in 160 class middleweight, but these guys normally weigh like in the 180s, mm -hmm. so they cut, they, they're naturally bigger dudes, they cut all that water away, make the weight, and then rehydrate overnight, right. and then you know, they're, they're naturally bigger fighting, you know, guys that are, you know, barely over the weight, so it's an advantage. Um, yeah. You see a lot of powerlifters uh, do the same thing because you don't want to be that guy who's, uh, you know, naturally sits at, let me see, like 165, benching against or, you know, competing against a guy who's naturally, you know, 180, 190, whatever. Right, right. Definitely an advantage. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I've done competitive powerlifting meets now for three years. I'll do three to four of these powerlifting meets throughout the year, um, just depending on my schedule and time. And um, I typically do the touch and go meets, like what we do in the gym every day. I'll do, there's two or three of those also that I'll do. And just, you know, I just kind of just started Googling it, bench press meets, powerlifting meets. And they have some at um, CrossFit here that uh, they do like the full power meets. They have this 100% raw powerlifting federation. They have some charity ones that they do for like an autistic kid, Special Olympics that I do. And so I pretty much have just kind of gotten this 
three or four things I do. It motivates me to get stronger, you know, to maintain the body weight that I'm at now. Um, supplement wise, what I'll do is I'll take um, NitroTech protein. Um, they have a new NitroTech called NitroTech Power. Uh, I haven't tried that yet. Um, NitroTech's great. You know, the bottle claims that you put on 34 pounds on your one max rep bench press at the end of the two pound bottle. You know, that's pretty strong. Um, and then I'll take a lot of uh, liquid BCAAs. I'll do liquid BCAAs. Um, I don't do creatine because with the Nitro Tech, you also gain a little bit of weight with the muscle you gain. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be that 190 guy trying to cut down to 180. And I, like I say, you know, I hope I'll weigh in tomorrow about 184 or 5 after I eat my Mexican food when we're done with the barbell life. So. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, so. I told my wife, I said, get ready for a week of hell. I may be cranky. But, uh, you, said anyway. you, got, you said you got a competition Saturday, right? Yeah, I got a competition this Saturday. It's in Durham at a place called Velocity Fitness. And then the uh, it's called Best of the Bench. So this one's just bench press only. It's your um, one best lift of your three best attempts. So my first one I'm going for is 365. And what you normally do in a bench meet, what I normally do and what I've been recommended to do is on your first set, you want to do something that you can do at least three reps. Yeah. So I'll go in there with 365. It also builds a good confidence. Um, my second set just depends on if I want to go for a meet record, if I want to go for a PR or whatever. The second attempt is normally the attempt I go in there knowing I can get, and I'm happy if I don't get my third. I'll walk up, you know, and I'll, I know I've got a shot at getting it again if I miss it on my second attempt. So, like, the meet record is 390 for my weight class. Um, it's a bench press competition. They've had it for about four or five years. So I'm going to go in there at 365, 395. Go ahead and get that down on the books. And then what you just saw me do is 405. I go in there, depending on how I feel, at 405 or 410. But what I, the, the strategy with that is, is if I don't get 395, I've got one more attempt at it. Yeah. So I don't want to go in there shooting at 400 or 405 because that's a Shoot big, it's a big deal. What's up? Shoot yourself in the foot doing that shit. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, and it's you don't want to go from 365 to 405. I mean, that's a 50 pound, you know, it's a 40 pound swing. That's it's a lot of weight, a big difference. You know, it's like jumping from a 185 bench to a 225, 230 bench. Mm -hmm. You know, it's. So, you know, there's a little bit of strategy to it um, as far as kind of my outlook on it, what we like to do, not do. I've never been one that's been big on counting calories and carbs and, you know, stuff like that. But I think, you know, I actually got a guy, he's on y'all's group, Terry Cox, and uh, he's an older gentleman. I've never met him in person, but he does a lot of competitions also, and he was asking me about supplements. and. He said, man, I take them all day. Why don't you take them, like, consecutively throughout the year? And I said, well, man, you know, you know, sometimes the stuff fools with your blood levels, your cholesterol, you know, your liver, stuff like that, depending on what you take, you know, with the creatine and whatnot. And I said, it's kind of like, you know, you, you know, if you take three Tylenols every day the rest of your life, you know, by the time you get a headache, it's just not going to help you out when you're immune to it. You know, it's like that guy that's always in the gym drinking the same monster drink. Is he really getting the pump after the 12th one during the week? You know, so I'll only take supplements. I'll take them on like a six to eight week basis, and then I take six to eight weeks off. So when I when I do that, it kind of just it's just kind of like kick starts it. You know, it's like you know jump starting the car, and just feels like it just kind of wakes me up. You know, and it's. I don't lose a lot of strength doing it, and you know I may drop five or ten pounds on my max bench, but it's good to just flush your body out, get it clean, you know, and get the levels back to where they naturally should be. And so that's supplement-wise, I only you know do those one or two things. You know, uh, if I want a cleaner protein, my wife's gym they sell like a Quest protein. You know, they we've got the Quest bars at home, and so so normally you know like. Um, during the day, if I so I, I was kind of that guy in high school that was always strong pound for pound, 
did some bench press meets in the 140A class being in high school. And then, you know, had two kids, went through a divorce, put some weight on, and I ended up about 185 with probably about 25% body fat. So met my current wife, and she has a gym that's a studio gym. They do a lot of um, they do a lot of boxing, kickboxing, calisthenics, cardio, TRX, yoga, cycle, you name it. Um, got down to 158. Was looked like a P90X guy, a little lean rip guy. I was like 6.8% body fat, and she we were having like a push-up contest, and I think I ended up doing like 176 push-ups in a row. And I was like, you know, that's pretty solid. We'll see if there's any bench press meets. I ain't done a bench press meet since high school. So that's kind of how I got into it. Then I started putting on my muscle. Then I went from that 158 to that 165 class. Then that's when I kind of had the back surgery. After back surgery, I couldn't do anything for three or four months um, other than pick up like a, a grocery bag full of stuff. Um, I've learned to be smart about picking up weights and stuff instead of going to grab like a 100-pound dumbbell and picking it up and then rocking it back and putting it up and then leaning up with it. I've learned to just work out with a guy. There's a, a, one of my best friends, Aubrey. He's on the group. Um, he does the curl competitions with me. Josh, the guy that was in the video, he does that with me. And so, you know, just I don't want to be that meathead muscle guy that doesn't need a spot. I mean, I mm -hmm. I like a spot. If I'm doing 225 for 20, 20 reps, I just want to mm – -hmm. I'd rather be safe than sorry because I've already been on the sorry part, and it didn't give me anywhere but surgery and a bunch of aches and pains. So, now, is that how you hurt your back? You didn't have a spot or what? No. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't that. It's, you know, I think most of it was hereditary and working in construction. Mm -hmm. So working in construction in high school, you know, the, the labor is not like it was back then. And we were picking up, me and my brother were picking up a bunch of 75-pound bag, concrete bags, and 8-inch, you know, cylinder blocks and 2 by 4s and just constant moving and bending and probably like every other 16, 18-year-old kid lifting weights with improper form and never really being taught and just mm -hmm. not feeling the aches or pains. Um, my grandmother's had three back operations, my aunt and uncle, so I think it's really a hereditary thing. Um, so mine started off with the two degenerative discs, and that went from two degenerative discs to two herniated discs in my L4, L5. And so, um, you know, I, I try and correct some of the guys, you know, in the gym when I can, you know, in a nice polite way because I've been there before. and. I never know, you know, when I was 20 or 25 years old, how I was going to feel at 36, soon to be 37. So, but, you know, I, I'll change up my grip on the bench press sometimes too. You know, one week I'll go super wide, one week I'll go like tricep close. My normal grip is, um, what I'll do is I'll do pinkies on the rings, you know, when you're laying down. Mm -hmm. um, what, what I normally do where the grip starts, I kind of put my thumb where the grip starts. And then I'll close my thumb, and then I'll, I'll lock it like that. So I'm usually about four or five inches, pretty much shoulder width apart. Um, and that's mainly because I've got more shoulder and upper body strength than I do back and shoulder strength. I use more of my chest to lift than more of my back. You know, a lot of guys will say, you know, why don't you kick your feet back, use your leg drive, arch your back, use your lats, and incorporate that all into it. And, I've gotten a lot of good positive criticism, and 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 I'm still learning too. I mean, I'm by no means as as good as some of the guys. I mean, it's a lot of people, whether they're 20 years old or 60 years old, look at them, look look at me in disbelief, or shake their head, or ask what the hell I'm taking. <laughs> well, you're lifting what two and a half times your body weight, right? Yeah, man. Yep. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You know, and I'm like, you know, for the, the NFL combine, you know, I'm, I can do 225, my max will match 26. You know, and I, there's a lot of guys, wide receivers that are 180 coming out of college doing 10 to 12 reps. You know, it, it's just there's not a lot of guys throwing up 20-something reps in it. So This but, is back-to-back, -back, right? No stop. No, uh, no yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah, just competitive reps doing it. Yeah, so 20, 26 is my best doing that. Um so I kind of have goals, you know, like my main goal was to get, my lifetime goal was to get like 315. Can I put three plates on it and ever get it but anyway? So I did that, you know, I did 315. And, you know, you build, a lot of these powerlifting guys, they work off of pyramid charts. 
And so what they'll do is they'll do like 70 to 90 percent of what they can do and they'll do five sets but they'll only go like two to three reps mm -hmm. um and that's kind of how they build their strength is like a pyramid form i don't necessarily do that because i don't want to because of the shoulder pain that i've had and that's why i incorporate that slingshot um i don't like going so heavy i'll do that one rep max i'll do some pause sets but you know what works for me may not for you guys and vice versa but it's um uh, it's something i look forward to doing and it's uh it's competitive and i'm pretty good at doing it so i you know enjoy it well, we got you on the show man um now for like guys out there who are listening and girls um you know someone who just wants to really take their bench to the next man, what would be some Cut and dry some of your basic uh, tips, some of your basic advice you give them as far as, okay, you're going to start a new bench routine, this is what you should do. You know, like, I'll just say, you know, you know, um, can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Just, you know, don't get discouraged. I mean, every, everybody hits a wall. You know, somebody asked me, do you ever hit a plateau? You know, and then when you do, you start incorporating different things. You know, you start trying the slingshot, you start trying high reps, you start trying, you know, majority, 90% of people that do their workouts, you know, they don't, you know, muscle confusion, they always do the same thing. You know, they're in there doing the same amount of sets, the same amount of reps, and they increase it five pounds or 10 pounds from one week to the next. And, you know, you got to go in there saying, you know what, I'm going to, there's four weeks in this month, and I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to do high reps one week, I'm going to do low reps one week, I'm going to just focus on making my triceps super strong this week, or I'm going to go in there and ask for a spot, and I'm going to go in there and, you know, I haven't done dumbbell incline in a while. I've done regular incline on the bar. You know, uh, I'm not really big on doing decline, but, you know, I've, I know that it's going to work for me. And, and so sometimes when you hit a wall, you need to try and have muscle confusion and just know that, you know, you you, you know, it, it's kind of like the diet, you know, when, you, when you're when you on a diet, you know, one day and two days is not going to change anything. It's a, it's a continuous thing that you've got to stick with. And, you know, it's whether it's at work or whether it's your personal life, it's just, you know, it's nothing's going to change overnight. And you just got to go in there with a good attitude and know that there's going to be good days and there's going to be. And um, I don't I don't keep like a workout log book. Um, I've got a couple of buddies that do. There's a couple of good fitness apps. You know, I think one's called JFit that my buddy uses. And yeah. it, it's a free app. And um, what that does is it plugs in your reps, your sets, your max, what you did. Um, and that's good because it gives you a it, – it's good for him because it gives you a tool to say, all right, well, this last week I did this, so, you know, I can do this. And so, you know, it's just – it's about really just, you know, like when you, you know, you being in the service for nine years and you go to battle. I mean, you know, I mean, there's, there's moments that you got to get up earlier or later than some other days and that you got to put in harder, harder hours or that you're on the battlefield and it's not the first place you want to be, but you got to sit there and you got to do it. And it's just, that's what it is. I mean, nothing, nothing in life comes easy and it's, you know, it's just putting hard work into it, being determined and just having small incremental goals. I mean, you know, you just, I've seen William, you know, do bench press, and he, at one point in time, was doing 315 like once or twice. I think he's repping it out like five or six times now. And consistency is key. I mean, that's, you know, if you can be consistent with your diet, with your job, and the gym, I mean, it's, results will come. You know, it's just, they're not going to come overnight, but it's, uh, it's all worth it at the end. You know, I was that, like I said, I was that guy that went from 325 to 405, after, you know, after a back surgery. And so, you know, if you want to, sorry guys, if you want to stick, stick with something, you just, you got to stick with it. You can't get discouraged. And, um, you know, just know that one day that uh, you'll be stronger than the next day. It may take a week, it may take a month. And, you know, it's just uh, some of you guys, if you, if you want it bad enough, you got to do it. All right, so you guys heard it. Big Bench Steve, keys to success, variation, that means different uh, different types of bench, incline, decline, wide grip, close grip, 
uh, different rep ranges. Uh, you know, try, try, you know, always having a spotter, you know, just, you know, a week, you know, trying those plate presses. Um, you know, like I said, it, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, that's all good. Someone to, someone to push you. I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's key. You know, you're not going to try to, you're not going to, you're not going to have the, the confidence to attempt a new, you know, PR if you don't have someone spotting you or, or even pushing you. All the way, man. Um, so consistency and then short-term goals. Always try to aim for the next thing. That's some solid advice, man. What were you going to say, Larry? So I, I was going to say, as you've gone up, did you notice that you changed who your bench press partners were to kind of challenge you? You know, that's that's a good question. You know, I, I've got a buddy that I work with that is really good in the curl, and I can honestly tell you, man, I'm not as motivated to bench with him because his max is about, like, 245, and he just doesn't really give me that push or drive that my buddy Josh does who benches, like, 460. And so, you know, me and Josh are friendly competitive, and so what we'll do is we'll say, okay, you know what, man, like, Steve, you weigh 180, and Josh, you weigh 240. There's a 60-pound difference. So I'll say, Josh, let me put on 325 on the bench. Let me max out how many reps of 325 I can do, and we're going to put 385 on for you. And, you know, there's a 60-pound weight difference between me to you, and let's see if I can pump out more reps per body pound or if you can pump out more reps per body pound. You know, so we push each other that way. Um, we also do it with the endurance and stamina, with, you know, maxing out, you know, obviously he's 60 pounds more than me, so it's going to be easier for him to push out 325, but it may be easier for me to uh, push out 225 because, you know, I may have better muscle tone than he does when being that he's a bigger guy and he's got bigger, you know, muscles and body fat where I'm more toned and lean and my cardiovascular is a little bit better than him. And a lot of that is just trying to incorporate different things, you know. When you're doing that touch and go um, and you're trying to burn out, you'll get some guys that will go really hard the first 10 reps and then they'll kind of take a break and they'll only get five more reps. Where if they would have gone just animalistic like the first 95% and they say, you know what, I'm going to go for 20, but I'm going, I'm going for 20 before I stop and take a break. You know, and you got to just go for like 17 and then hope you can get through. I mean, you can't just – a lot of guys, it's more of a, a mental than a physical thing. They can do it, but it's just – like you said, you know, that's a great question. You know, you gotta you got to have somebody that pushes you. You know, it's kind of like when's the last time that you've seen somebody on the side of the road that was running with a buddy and the other person was a half a mile in front of the next person? You know, you, you guys are always, you know, running with somebody one way or the other. So it, you know, I'll do, um, I'll do my chest workouts with my buddy Josh. I also do it with Aubrey because I like that I can push Aubrey and I motivate Aubrey. But when I get ready for my competitions, it's nice knowing that I've got a buddy that is not pound for pound stronger than me, but he's stronger than me. And what we do is we push each other to get our maxes higher, our PRs higher. He throws off some suggestions to me. I throw off suggestions to him. Um, we've been lifting and competing now. We've been good friends for about 15 years. And, um, you know, he takes some different things than I take. And uh, he's on a different work schedule and sleep pattern and stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're solid at what we do. And I know he's always got a really good shot at winning. And he knows I do, too. So, yes, yeah, so that's that was, a, that was a good question. You know, we, we strive to push each other. And um, it's it's more motivating when you got someone who's a little bit above you because you always try to get to their goal, despite what you weigh or what they weigh, because it's what you that's where you want to be at one day. Yeah, we've been finding you know those keys to success in life. You know, surround yourself around people that are where you want to be. Are you know those five friends that you hang around? You're an average of them. We found those to play out even when weightlifting. Um, for all of those people hitting chant, you know, different uh, hitting different goals, uh, hitting PRs or whether it be hitting championships and getting titles, you know, it really comes back to who they surrounded themselves around. That's um, right. 
you, you never really hear about anybody doing anything great that hung out with people who weren't trying to make themselves better in any way. So That's I, I mean, it, it plays back into the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we do a lot of the same competitive meets. Um, he does probably four out of the five that I do, you know, so we'll, you know, carpool sometimes, you know, we'll split a room if it's in another state or whatnot. And so what we normally do is we meet up and when we're in the gym, he's the guy that uses that JFit app. And we'll say, you know what, he, he calls me Trainer Steve, even though he's you know, a big dude. But so you know, I kind of motivate him to, to do different sets, do different things. There was actually something that um, a lot of people have recommended to me, um, and that's called speed benching. That's something I haven't you know, talked about yet. And what speed benching is, is you can either use the bench block or not, and it's a total amount of volume. And what you do, instead of going in there and doing 315 for a set of 10, you know, and you mul that's a multiplier, you know, you just did 3,150 pounds. But if you're supposed to use 50% of your max, so say your max is, is 300, Tony, you go in there with only 150 pounds, okay, and you do three reps of it fast as shit, as fast as you can, just pop, 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 then you put it back on the rack. You rest period is only 30 seconds in between the sets. You pull it, you do another three, rack it, pull it, do another three, rack it. So you do that for 16 sets, and it takes about nine minutes to do it. So what you do is you multiply the 16 times three. You do 48 reps of 150 pounds on bench press, and your total volume ends up being, say, 10,000 versus you doing 315 for a set of 10 at 3,000. So that also is a great way of working up your chest, and it works on that lower portion. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, it's the pausing, it's the high reps, it's the speed bench, it's incorporating the slingshot, it's, you know, using the block bench, it's just, you know, how many things can you, you research, how many toys, what arsenal can you bring to the game tools, that, yeah. that everyone else is successful with doing, you know, this guy invented a slingshot and this guy can do this at it, and this guy can do that at it, and it's, when you hit that plateau, it's, you know, it's kind of like my son, he's a, he's a really good sprinter, and he does – he did a half marathon. He's, you know, 10 years old. He did it in an hour and 44 minutes, you know. And so I'm having, a, I'm having a hard time right now in trying to figure out, you know, he's always the running back of the football team. He does the 100, the 2, the 4, the long jump. You know, we did a 5K yesterday. He got first place in by two minutes for 12 and under. He beat four 12-year-old kids. He's 10 years old. He's done an AK or whatever. And it's, what can you do to not overtrain the little guy, but to train him good enough so that way, you know, he can pace himself, but in that last mile when it's important that he's not getting burnt out and he's got his breathing technique right, that he's you know, got that focus and that determination to want to be better. And so, you know, as a father, you know, me working out, you know, motivates him. And he, he's always told me, he said, Dad, you're not strong until you can bench press 400. So I'm finally strong, man. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve, I got a quick question before we take uh, we can take some questions from the group. Uh, okay. We're running short on time, so let's make this question quick. Um, this is a big thing, and you know it from competing. Um, mental toughness. So, for instance, before you're about to, to try to hit a new PR, or you're in a competition, you're about to go up on a new attempt. What are what is something that you do to get your mind right to to pull off that lift to psych yourself up? You know, I've got a I've got a playlist of music that works for me, and you know my song my go-to song is kind of you know, down with the sickness, disturbed, and it's 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 something that um it's just. You don't hear every day on the radio. It's that pump-up song that you know a football team comes out to, whatnot. It's knowing how you know having a lot of flashbacks, actually, man. It's knowing how hard you train. Um, it's knowing the right commands. I mean, you got to know, you know, when you, you see the head judge, you got to. The main thing at the power to meet, a touch and go meet, is knowing the commands, knowing what they're looking for, and just getting pissed off, man. You just you just got to go in there with a chip on your shoulder, and you just got to go in there knowing that. You know, I've got a necklace, and it says uh, me versus me, 
And you got to go in there knowing that and thinking, you know, you got there's got to be a little bit of you know confidence and, and confidence in there, going that no one can beat me at my best. And so, you know, if if you if you didn't have that attitude, I don't care if you're playing basketball or you're not playing, or you're you're playing kickball on the freaking street. I mean, you're never going to have that chip on your shoulder that, you know, that's that competitiveness that you need. I mean, you need that. Um, I'm not saying, you know, I walk around like a hothead or nothing, but I've, I've typically got my music in my ears. I'm thinking about things that have irritated me. I'm thinking about how hard I've trained and how, uh, how I'm, you know, the strategy of, you know, what I'm going to do. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll get my – I work the like tomorrow. I'll go ahead and get my attempts done, knowing for my meets on Saturday. So I'll know going in there Saturday. I'm like, man, 385 wasn't shit when I picked it up on Monday. I mean, I'm going there doing that. So, but you know, you never want to go in there at like a 90% max in the first one, and thinking like, shit, that was freaking heavy, man. I'm not, I'm not gonna. There's no way I'm gonna hit my second. Fight you up. It fucks you yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. So. Sorry, man. I don't mean to be talking y'all's head off about. It. That's just. Oh, that's what you're here for, man. This is this is good stuff. Um, so, I got uh, there. Most of the questions actually you answered during the the show, but um, I'll get to one that I found. Um, this one's from Amresh Chand. What's up? Uh, he says, "Did you ever hit any plateaus on your bench? If so, how did you over?" overcome the the plateau and uh, do you have any unconventional techniques to improve your lifts and I know you talked about um, you know different techniques so I guess that part's covered but as far as like yeah you when, know, you when, I've, when I've hit that when I've hit that wall when I've hit that plateau that's what I was kind of talking about with the incorporating different things with the slingshot with the block bench yeah uh, and you know and it's when you go into these bench press meets and I know that the bottom of my half of my chest is shoots off my chest quicker than my tricep lockout. I know I need to focus more on my triceps. And so I'll go in there looking at some of my old videos. I use them as motivation and I'll go in there and I just, I critique myself uh, with my buddy and I'll say, you know what, do you really think I need to work more on my lockout? Do you need to think I work on my bottom half? And so, you know, when I hit plateaus, I'll change up my, my training. And I'll do different, different sets, different reps, different exercises, um, and I, uh, I just always try and incorporate different things. Like I mentioned earlier about muscle confusion, you know, you try and do different things. You know, if you, you know, I know like Mario Lopez, he does boxing, he does swimming, he bikes. I mean, the body, the guy's built like a freaking statue, right? You know, so it's AC he does. Slater. What's that? It's see Slater. That's right, AC Slater, <laughs> looking diesel. Show on our age. Yeah, that's right. But uh, um, anyway, so you know, it, it's just it's all about muscle. You know, if you do the same thing repetitively, you're just gonna remain the same. And it's it's about failure. I mean, you, I, there's been so many days I've gone in there, man, that I've gone in there. It, it, it's a lot mental. I, I go in there, and I know 405 is on the bar. I see eight plates on there, and I know what I weigh. And I'm, you know, in the second I look at those eight plates, you can say, that's a lot of fucking weight. Hell no. Or you can say, you know what, man? I'm going to kick this damn thing's ass. What's one more plate than 315? Let's, let's, let's get nasty. You know, and then I'll put my music in and then I go on my, my mental thing. But the second that you doubt yourself is the second that you'll fail. And yeah, it's, it's a snowball effect. As yeah. as you, it's almost like when you squat, when you unrack it, heavy weight. Mm -hmm. if, if that first thought that comes in your head is, oh, shit, this is heavy, mm -hmm. the rest of the thought is, is, is done for. But if you if you pull it off the rack, fierce and strong, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shit, you got it. Yeah. I mean, um, I, know, I know it sounds retarded, but, like, even when I'm racking the weights, I know the second that I pick up a 45-pound plate to put it on the bench, whether it's going to be a good day or not, depending <laughs> on how heavy that 45-pound plate is. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it honestly one thing that's helped me is same thing with bench. Like, I'll I'll get on the the bench and I'll kind of grab the bar before I lift it and just kind of shake it real hard. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, move it a little bit just to make it feel. It tells you like this ain't that heavy, and right. then just 
be explosive as soon as you take it off because a lot of guys just get it off real weak, you know, and then try to be strong afterwards, and you're already you're already fucking up. But if you if you just push it off hard to yeah. start with, mm-hmm. it's it's mental. You already got that. Okay, this ain't that bad. So that's, but, that's um, another reason why I incorporate having spotters a lot is because. You know, you use a lot of shoulder tension and getting it off the rack when you, you know, you're over 225 pounds and you're doing anything. And having a good guy that gets a lift off. I mean, we've all had those guys that are terrible at spotters. You know, that's why you work out with who you work out with and who you don't with who you don't. But you know, you want to be able to feel it, but you want them to where you're getting out of the hole, and then you want to hold it for like two or three seconds. And you know, that's kind of like what I was telling Will the other day is that like he's picking it up and dropping it. And it's just, you know, it's kind of like that roller coaster. It's like he hasn't gone uphill to go downhill yet, so he doesn't know what to expect. And so, you know, so a lot of times what I'll do um, is called kinetic energy. And, and what, it, what it is is having that slingshot. And I had two guys, two huge guys who were on the side of 405 the other day. And he said, man, what I want you to do, he goes, is fucking pick up the 405 lower it as slow as you can. He goes, yeah. your biceps are going to start shaking. You're going to, your body's going to go freaking insane. He goes, and when you get, and I go, what do you want me to do when I get down to my chest? I don't play with 405. And yeah. he said, We're going, we'll pick it up. We'll pick it off of And then so, you know, so, I, and, and that's the other thing is not being a know-it-all, you know, in the gym. You know, listen to other people that are stronger than you. Listen to other people that give out, you know, good positive criticism. And, you know, a lot of that's worked for me because I've never been that person that can't take somebody else's opinions and, and because I've always been that guy to want to ask a question of how can I get better. I mean, yeah. and, and I'm still learning, you know, well, we all still learn no matter how good we are or what we do. But that's the main thing, man, is just, you know, being motivated, being determined, never giving up, try to stay positive, you know, take criticism, you know, Lift with lift with an attitude, with a chip on your shoulder. Try different techniques. Try the slingshot. Try the block. Try high reps. Try low reps. Try the close grip, medium grip, wide grip. And it's just there's. I mean, it's like how many? Who knew that there were so much freaking things you could do laying down on the damn bench press, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's so, so you know, it's just it's pretty cool knowing that um, you know it, you, you, it's. You know, when someone pats you on the back and you're like, man, you're fucking strong, like, it's, it, it's good, you know. So on those days, you need that, you know. Sometimes you physically look at the weight on the side. You know, you're you're not a small guy, but you're not a big guy. You may see 275, Tony, and you're like, man, that's a lot of freaking weight. And like I said, you know, the second you see that, you know, your mentality needs to be, well, it's only three plates on each side. It's a 45, 45, and a 25. But some people can't even look at it. They, it's like out of sight, out of mind. Like I'm just, I'm going in there, and I don't care how heavy or how light it feels. It's just like the physicalness of seeing it, the mentality of it. It just kind of freaks them out. Yeah, you got to be one of those people that figures out what psychs you out. Like right. um, I, I go in there, and I always like pump myself up for whatever, whatever it is I'm gonna do. Like my thing is, I go, I look, I do a few breaths, and I go, you know what? Screw it, bubbles out, and I just go and do it. I just, yeah, I'm inside, out of mind, and I just fall on. Yeah. So what works for me too, man, is that like, you know, when I'm in my gym, if I have four or five in there, like everybody else's gym, it's eight forty-five pound plates. It's four the bar and then four. But when I go to my powerlifting meets, it's kilograms instead of pounds. And so it's the colored plates. They're red or they're yellow or they're green. They're not like the traditional iron plates or black plates that you see in the gyms. So I'll go in there with like 365 on an attempt, but it looks like 275 for me. It's like, you know, a big round one, a round one, and a green one. I'm like, 275 ain't shit. Like, come on. Like, so, you know, so you go in there, like I said, it's just you got to have your mind in the right spot. You got to be a little bit, <clears throat> I don't want to say arrogant, but you got to be, you got to have a little chip on your shoulder, and you got to just, you guys know it's game time, man. You just you train too hard to, to, to lose and to fail. And uh, but you got to know on an everyday basis in the gym, there's gonna be fails. There's gonna be fails when you're in power training. But all you can do is give it your best. And you know, I've always told my son, you know, you can win as a winner or you can lose as a winner. I got to But um, you know, as long as you lose and you give it 100, percent 
you know, or you can win and you give it a hundred percent. That's all you can. That's all you can do. So failure, failure breeds success. Yep. So, yep. Uh, well, we're running out of time, bro. So. Cool, man. Thanks for great, great having you on the show, man. You yeah. definitely heard a lot of good advice. Like today's actually my bench day, so I'm pretty pumped to go out there and uh, okay. try some of the stuff you shared. Um, like I said, we had a bunch of questions, but you pretty much covered them all yeah. uh, with with the stuff you shared. So good stuff, man. Um, good luck Saturday. Thanks. Man. And uh, do you have any any uh, shout outs you want to do? Uh, give anybody or any uh, companies or anything like that? Any plugs? No, man. I, you know, I'm excited that you guys got this new nutrition line out, and I'm, lo I'm looking forward to you know trying to get some of that stuff and you know the supplements, you know and uh, I think there's a picture of it down there, and uh, I'm always I'm always telling people about the barbell life, man. So you know it's uh, it's motivating, you know, to see everybody's post. You know, it's something that is 80% of my news feed with you know 20,000 members, right? Mm -hmm. And so you know whether whether it's a guy doing something or a girl doing something or a physique show or whatever, it's just you know you wake up to it, you go to bed late at night, you know, looking up the phone, and it's just it's motivating. So I just want to say, you know. Shout out to you guys. Thank you for motivating everybody that's part of this group. And it just, uh, you know, because there's, there's days that you don't want to go in the gym and there's days you can't get enough of the gym. You go on those two to three days, two to three times a day. And so, you know, it's, uh, I just want to say thanks to you guys. I'm going to give a shout out to you guys for, for having me on the show and uh, uh, for listening. And I hope the couple of little key things I gave y'all incorporate and I hope it works out for you. Whether, it, you know, it's, it's a five or 10 pound gain and it's just, Stay at it, man. It'll come. It, it's not coming tomorrow, but it may be here July or August. Well, I'll tell hey, you I got one question. If you don't mind. Uh, when benching on lift offs, when I lift heavy, you know, I get off. Like, I, I just, that's why I don't like lift offs. You know what I'm talking about? Right. When someone lifts the weight off, I get jinx. I mean, I just, it doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Hey, well, how, how, um, how many, so like, how many. Yeah. What are you trying to do on this with this weight? I mean, what are you? Is, are, are you trying to max out? Is it like a one a one rep max? Or are you doing a yeah? Or, hey you know, guys. I think, just, uh, I think you know my best advice for you, man, doing that is um, grab a couple different guys throughout the gym. You know, um, that either look like they got good bench form or that they've been in, around the gym for a while. And don't use them for a one rep max. You know, use them for a six to eight rep set and see if they give you the lift off that you want. You know, because, okay. you know, there's a guy in there um, that's just, he's super muscular and he's got crazy strong arms. And I had him lift off 315. And I'll be honest, man, when I, when I picked it up, I thought it was 430 because I didn't feel the weight at all. The fucker just picked up like the whole thing. And so, you know, you want somebody to give you that, 10 or 15 pounds that it'll clear the hook it clears the rack so get somebody you're comfortable with but get somebody that whether it's a heavy set or whether it's a set for reps that you know that you know when when i do when i have a lifter i'll say okay one two three lift and then so that's when he gives me my lift so you know i'll know when to start it when not to start it you know i'll tell guys like i'll let you know when to grab the ball like if it starts to descend let it descend, and I'll just say, grab it or get it, or just I'll physically say something so you don't get irritated that, you know, I'll, I may say, you know, I'm going to go for two, but try to help me on the third one. I'm going to need help. So it's just communicating with people and finding somebody that you can work with, and that person may not be in the gym there all the time, but maybe grab somebody else that looks like that they, you know, know what they're doing and just having somebody give you a, a spot on something that's a set of eight that's easy and if they pick up the majority of it, you know you don't want them for a one rep max. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Steve. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hope that helps. All right. So uh, thanks for the question, Will. Um, like I said, we got to wrap it up, though. Um, Steve, we're going to get you in that barbell nutrition singlet for uh, January's meet. That'll be cool. Let's do um, it. Definitely. Thanks for coming on the show. You've been a great guest. Yeah, man. Um, now... With that segue, talk about the uh, the brand coming out. We'll be dropping next month. Uh, with Donium, the pre-workout, and Chain Reaction, the post-workout. Um, 
sign up for the mailing list, barbellnutrition.com. Um, you'll get uh, discount codes, um, deals on uh, any future offers, uh, any information on the product. We'll be putting that out soon. And um, also, we're dropping shirts. It's been a few months. Everybody's been begging, uh, asking, you know, bring them back. We got a few thousand members, so it's about that time. Um, I'll post a link on the page uh, here shortly. But in the meantime, uh, again, if you're on the Barbell Nutrition uh, newsletter, the mailing list, um, we're going to send out a discount coupon for you guys, just for you. So you can uh, get a discount on, on them uh, hoodies, tanks, and um, T-shirts. And cool, man. also for the Barbie shirts as well. Yeah, so, I, got, I get so many compliments on that Barbarian shirt. So, you know, I, yeah, shout out to TJ. He, he, he made that one. He's a, that's, he's cool, a monster. That's, bad, that's badass. I like that. But all right, guys, uh, we'll wrap it up. Thanks again, Steve. Thanks, uh, Will, Larry. Appreciate you guys uh, making it out. And uh, till next week, we're out. Tony, go hit that bench. Definitely. All right, man. Later. Later.